Hey, 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 good morning, Trish. Um, I'm going to do this video a little bit different. Uh, it's going to be uh, just strictly on that one file that you sent me. But we're going to run both files through it, okay? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to just double-click and make a track, okay? I'm going to come up on this track, and I'm going to add in... Now, this is my recently used uh, plugins. You're going to find these up here where they are, but just remember the name. Okay, and that way I don't have to drag this video out too much. We're going to put on a uh, 80 hertz high pass filter. Okay, you see the basic 150 high pass filter? And then you've got the 100, uh, and these are hertz. So what you can do is just click on this. Okay, as you can see these bands right here, you're not going to use. Now what I did is if you come over here, uh, you can just type in 80. Okay, and that's what it is. Now, we're going to save this, save preset, and I'm just going to put 80 HPF. And I'm going to say OK. Now, I'm going to click this button again, and I'm going to save this as the default. So anytime I bring this up, this EQ, this is what's going to come up, okay? That's the first thing. Now we're going to come over to the master track, and we're going to put in the volume adjustment, okay? We're going to uncheck the box. We're going to come over, and we're going to put in the rear gate, and we're going to uncheck the box. We're going to come over to the audio statistics. And we're going to uncheck the box. Now, at this point, I'm going to come up to File, uh, Save Version of Project Templates, Recent Project, Project Templates, Save Project as Template. I'm going to simply put Audiobook. And I'm going to say Save. Okay. Now, anytime I bring up Reaper, all I've got to do is come up. Let's just say, uh, let's come up here and do a new project. And we don't want to save this project, no, because we don't have nothing there yet. Don't worry about that. That's another project I'm working on. As you can see, all this is blank now, okay? But if I come over here to Project Templates, and I go to Audiobook, watch what happens. Boom, I'm right back. Clean slate, okay? Now, this you can turn off right here just because we have one plugin and one plugin only. And we're going to turn these on as we come through, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, so you can uh, on, off. Uh, I, I, I turn them off, Trish, just because I don't turn nothing on until I get ready to use it. Okay, insert media file. Now, this is your second file that you sent. Okay. At this point, I really don't need to do anything with it except find out how loud it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to render this file. And we're just going to call it chapter 1, temp. Okay. Now, where do we want to send this to? Well, I've already made a folder. Uh, let's see where we're at. Okay, Trisha Book XYZ. I just made this folder on my desktop. You know how to do that. We're going to say OK. Now, we're going to do the master project. Over here, we're going to uncheck this tell. What that tell means is simply after the audio file, you know, if you've got it stopped exactly at three minutes, well, this is going to add. 1000 milliseconds to the end of that file. But since we're working with precise uh, timelines here, remember the one second before, the one second after. Okay, we're in a stereo, 192, and I've got the box checked. We're going to add it back to Reaper. And I'm going to go render one file. Don't worry about these lines right here. Okay, and now we're going to hit close. Now there's our file. 
Now, the only difference between these two files is one is in a WAV format and one is in an MP3 format. Now, this is why we want it in the MP3. I'm going to open these items in MP3 gain. And this is going to tell me, and we're going to analyze this track. Okay, now I am at a 60 dB level. This is for measuring dBs. This is not for uh, RMS, which is root mean squared. This is not lofts, which is loudness units full scales. These are dBs. Okay, so I'm just going to say exit. Now, we don't need this track anymore. Remember now, we came in at 60. We want to be, according to uh, your specifications you gave me, so we're already on these three. The MP3, we want to be between 86 and 92. Okay, there's your 1.45 uh, uh, seconds for the room silence at the beginning and the end of each file. Now, the only parameters you did not give me was the maximum peak. And I'm going to tell you right now, these levels are so close to the ACX requirements, I'm going to assume they're at least a negative three. Okay? Now, they were all recorded with a gain all the way, or up all the way. I am using a Shure SM7. Okay, this is the same microphone that Michael Jackson used when he recorded Thriller. And I am using the same soundboard that you have. Okay? So let's go on back into Reaper now. So, like I said, we don't need this anymore. So we're going to remove this. Now we're going to come over to our volume adjustment. We know we need to add 30 dBs to it, so we're going to go 30. Okay? You don't have to do a plus and minus. Now, when you get to the maximum volume, you have to use the minus key, which is right next to the plus key. 3, and I'm going to go just 3.5, because I like that little bit of extra headroom. Okay, so now we're going to take and uh, check this box. So that turns it on. Okay, we're going to leave the gate and the audio statistics off at this time. So now we're going to do, and we're going to turn this into an MP3 again. Okay. Enter. Now we've got chapter one, temp, and then I'm simply going to start with the one. Okay, everything else stays the same. Render one file. Look at the size of it now. Okay, look at our peaks up here. Negative 3.6. Well, we're right where we want to be. We're going to hit close. Look at the difference now. From there to there. Now, I want to show you something else too. Okay, I'm going to do this real fast because I think this might be where you're getting a, just maybe. Maybe this is what's confusing you. Okay. We're going to analyze this track. When I talk about input gains, it's you want to be around a negative 18 dBs. What I'm going to show you, what this is going to tell me the loudness is, is two totally different things. So if you're analyzing your audio and you go, well, crap, man, I'm at a negative 48.5 and I should be at a negative 18. That is incorrect, okay? It is two totally different beasts. Your input level, and once it's recorded, the output level are totally different. So we're just going to go and do away with this. So now we have uh, here, this is our MP3. So now we're going to do the same thing. Now look, as you record this, you are a narrator, and, and, and you're the voiceover artist. That's the first hat that you need to put on. You need to set up your recording environment properly, your input levels properly, and now we're getting into the mastering hat. Okay, you got to put on your mastering hat because there is no mixing. So now we're going to simply click this and we're going to check this now. And looky there, we're at a 90.1. Okay, we've got 3 dBs before we can actually clip this track. So now we know that we have our volume adjustment set correctly, which is right here. So now we're going to take this and we're going to delete this track. And we're going to simply work with this track now.
Now, you told me, I think it was 108 to 119. So let's go ahead and pull this up. Let me, oh, uh, where are we at? Uh, I just got to get close and zoom in. Okay, here's 108. I'm going to hit the M key. That's our first marker. Okay, we're going to come over here. Just scroll a little bit. Here we come up to the 119. We're actually close to the 120. I'm going to hit the M key again, just the M key. That's my second marker. Now, this is what you said uh, was the problem. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this EQ off right now. All I want to do is hear what it says now at the, or what it sounds like at the proper level. So that's why this is the only thing we have on. And we're going to bring this back over here. I'm going to click the loop button and let's play and listen. The affluent live longer and better and can afford the best medical care in the world, the finest education, and the most elegant possessions. In addition... Okay, now right there I heard you breathing. Now let's play this again without that volume adjustment. Okay, now that is why you must bring it to the proper volume before you start. Okay, so now the reason I've got this EQ turned off is I'm going to show you that there's a way we can do the same thing. Uh, remember, I told you about adding the 80 high pass filter? Okay, 80 hertz. Now let's go ahead and bring up our gate. We're going to engage that gate. Now, I apologize. Let's uh, unengage it. I w I'm pretty sure that this is where I heard the breath. I'm going to left mouse click. I'm going to bring this over. We're going to trap it again, and let's just listen to that now. Okay, look at your meter over here. That's your noise floor. Okay. Now let's apply the gate. See how I'm barely moving that up? Hear how you can hear the breathing. I want to move this as little as possible in order to cut that breathing out. Now let's bring up the audio statistics and I want to show you something here. Look at your noise floor right there now. Negative 317.95. I'm going to disengage the gate and let's watch what it shows then. See the negative 46? Okay. So we're going to engage that gate. And I apologize. Let me bring this back up again. Uh, when I told you about the high pass filter, see, you can set that high pass filter right here. You can just simply type in 80. 80 hertz. Okay, now that's going to do the same thing that the EQ is going to do. So in actuality, you don't even need this. So I'm just going to simply disengage it. Okay. Now, once you get this set, I'm going to take the loop off of it. Okay. You can actually come up here now and you would want to save the project. Book XYZ. Okay. Now you see where it says Reaper? We're not going to do that. We want to come back down to where it says Trish Book XYZ and we're going to say Save. Excuse me. So now I've got to run into town. Okay. I've got to go somewhere. I'm not going to be able to get back to this project for a day, maybe even a week. It doesn't matter, okay? I can close all this out. And now all I've got to do is let me bring this down. There it is. Click it. And here I am again, okay? 
So now, at this point, and I could hear the difference, okay? I could hear where between the two files, you know, I could, I could hear the noise. So whatever you did in your environment, something has changed. It's just that simple. So now we're going to come up here, and we're going to go render. Now we're going to go chapter one, and we're going to take the temp off of it. Okay? Or, G, or you know, C-H-A-P. T E R because you want to send them exactly what they're asking for. It's going to go uh, in your book, in that folder. Everything stays the same. Master mix, and we're going to say render one file. Okay, and we're going to say close. There's your stats on that file we just rendered. That's your noise floor, okay? There's your, your total peak, and the RMS is a negative 21, and, and those two numbers are real close right there, okay? So now we're going to just take both these files out. We're going to remove them, okay? Now I'm going to insert the first file you sent me. And there, uh, let me bring it back over here. Sorry about that. Okay. So we're going to leave all these settings just like they are. The only thing you should ever have to change would be your gate. But honestly, when you render your file, Trish, as a mastering engineer, you need to listen to the work you just produced. Okay. So we're going to leave everything set the way it is. We're going to come up here, we're going to render this file, and now we're going to just simply call it chapter two. Now, I know I've got these reversed, but you understand the principle, okay? Everything stays the same. Render one file, okay? And close. You see where everything's staying the same? Okay? So now, so now, what I'm going to do is, again, we don't need, remember now, this is the original. Always keep your originals. So we're going to do the same thing now. We're going to open this up in the editor. We're going to come here. But this time, instead of doing this, I want to add a folder. Okay. Let me come down here. So we're going to add that folder and say, okay. So there's all four of our files. So I'm going to highlight each one. Uh, hold the control down, left mouse click. And I'm going to say analyze. Honestly, the only two we're interested in is now chapter one and chapter two. Look at those numbers. Okay. Remember the temps, the first one we checked. Okay. So there we go, 90.1, 90.1, our target range is between 86 and 92, I think you said. Uh, and there's the consistency using Reaper, okay? And that's it. So let's go ahead and listen to this now. And uh, that'll be the uh, end of this video. Uh, you got a beautiful voice, all right? So let's just go ahead and uh, let me turn this off over here. And, and you'll get in the habit, you'll forget to do it, and it'll sound just way too loud. Well, if we play it now, we're telling it to add another 30 dBs to it. Okay, so we don't want to do that. So actually, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take the gate off now because we've already gated it. And we're going to leave the audio statistic on. And I'm going to go make me a cup of coffee and just listen to your own work. Social inequality. The haves and the have-nots. 6.1. Discuss the extent of social inequality in the United States. Although equality of opportunity is a central value of U.S. society, equality of outcome is not. In other words, most Americans believe everyone should have the same opportunity to achieve material well-being, 
but they do not object much to inequality in the actual situation of different groups in society. The middle class standard of living is portrayed over and over again in media representations of American lifestyles. But this image ignores both the handful of extremely rich Americans and the tens of millions who share only minimally in the nation's affluence. To observe inequality and understand its impact, you need only compare a few aspects of the lives led by the affluent and the poor in our society. The affluent live longer and better and can afford the best medical care in the world, the finest education, and the most elegant possessions. In addition, by discreetly influencing politicians, police officers, and other public officials to promote or defend their interests, they can obtain social preference and shape government policies. This capacity to purchase both possessions and influence gives those who are extremely wealthy a potential power that is grossly out of proportion to their numbers. For those who are poor, the situation is reversed. Although America's poor people seldom die of starvation and generally have more resources than the hopelessly poor populations of the developing world, they lead lives of serious deprivation compared with others in their own culture. This relative deprivation profoundly affects the style and quality of their lives. It extends beyond the mere distribution of income and includes inequality in education, health care, police protection, job opportunities, legal justice, housing, and many other areas. Poor people require more medical treatment and have longer and more serious illnesses. Their children are more likely to die than those who are more affluent, and their life expectancy is below the national average. They are more apt to live in deteriorating neighborhoods located near toxic waste sites. Given their despair, they are more likely to become criminals or juvenile delinquents, and they contribute more teenage pregnancy, alcoholism, and violence to U.S. society than any other socioeconomic group.